Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in a Cube. And in this video, we're talking about how Power BI handles Azure SQL database failover groups. Is it transparent? Is it elegant? Do I need to change connection strings? What do I need to do? You gotta stay tuned to find out. All right, okay, so Azure SQL database, failover groups, Power BI. Why are you talking about it? Well, you know, I gotta admit that most of my videos come from, you know, me working with my customers and talking to people, but this one was a little self-inflicted. I was curious about it. I was talking to uh, my friend Hope Foley and she was doing some stuff with it and she had some questions. She was doing all kind of crazy stuff. And I was like, I wonder does that work with Power BI? She was like, I don't know. And I was like, I'm gonna go try it, right? And so I spent, the weekend is strange, right? Um, working on this and it's pretty cool. And so if you guys are familiar with Always On, it's a similar type of functionality as Always On. You have you know, a primary replica and a secondary replica and one, the primary one is the read write and the secondary one is the read only typically. And um, in some cases, not always. And you create a listener and using that listener, that's what the applications use to connect to those underlying replicas. And if you want it to be redirected to a one, the secondary replica, you for read-only intent, you add application intent equals read-only to the connection string, and it automatically, ele elegantly, just transparently, when people connect and they specify that in the connection string, you you know you use one of the readable secondaries. In the case of Power BI, if you guys remember, I did a video on this a while ago, and there's a checkbox you need to. Um, you need to check called enable SQL Server failover support. When you are building your connection string, you check that box and that what's, that's what makes it happen. It automatically adds that to the connection string. And so I was curious, does this same behavior work with failover groups in Azure SQL database? So does it, does not? Well, let's find out, right? And the best way for me to do this, what, is to head over to my laptop. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to my Azure portal and to get the failover groups create it, right? To get everything set up, you need an Azure subscription, obviously. Then you create an instance of an Azure SQL database, an Azure SQL server, and then you create a database. So I've already done that. So let me close this out right here. So I've created an initial instance here and I've added a database to it. I have a single database. Then you look for, in the options here, you look for failover groups. So you click failover groups and you create a new failover group. This is kind of like creating, you know, your availability group and always on, but they call them failover groups. So I click add group and then I specify a name, I select the server, I specify my read write failover policy, my read write grace period, and then I select the database. All right, just that simple and click create. Just a few clicks of a button. I'm not installing SQL Server, I'm not installing failover clustering, I'm not enabling it using the configuration manager. I'm just learning some clicks. And so that's all I have to do a couple of clicks, click create and then my availability group will create. It'll begin to see you know, the database over to the secondary replica and sync everything up. If I click it, you'll see right here that it gives me a little nice little map. I like the visual, good job, right? And so the blue represents my primary replica and the green represents my secondary replica. But what's interesting, if you go down to the bottom of the page, you have two different endpoints. So with always on, I just have my listener and then I can connect directly to the physical servers. But with Azure SQL Database Failover Groups, they give you two endpoints, the read write endpoints. This is what you give your app devs and say, guys, you're developing a new application where you wanna write and read to the database, use this endpoint. And then endpoint, not endpoints, endpoint. And then if your people are using Power BI or Excel or building reports and they, you want to off them to one of your, offload it to one of your read-only replicas, right? You give them this read-only listener endpoint. And the, the difference between the two is that one of them uses the, one of them just kind of injects secondary as the second word in it, right? So the connection strings are very similar. It's just one has secondary right after the failover group name, as opposed to just saying higher ed database.windows.net the read-only listener endpoint has higher, higher ed secondary database.windows.net in it. So you give that to people that want to use Power BI and everything like that. And so my curiosity came is, how does Power BI handle this in the event of a failover? Do I need to change connections or do anything? Does it handle it elegantly behind the scene, elegantly and transparently? So app devs and Power BI users and people that's analyzing data or reading data from that secondary replica, do they need to go and change anything? And I was curious what I need to do. So what I did was I went over to Power BI 
and I created a report. And so the first step, I got some data and I went more, the very first thing I did, and I cho chose my Azure and I chose Azure SQL database. And I, the first connection I made was to my primary. I used the read, write listener, the listener that endpoint, the read, write listener endpoint, right? I took that one. That one doesn't have secondary in the name, paste it right there, clicked okay. That's this connection. And I just have a query that I wrote called select add at server name. So it'll specify the primary replica, okay? And then I repeated that, but this time, instead of using the read write endpoint, I, yo I chose the read only or read intent endpoint. And I specified that right here. But what I also did was I checked the box label, enable SQL Server failover support, because I remember when we did this with always on, it appended application intent to the application intent equals read only to the connection string. And I want to make sure that happens here. And also, if you go look at the documentation, it says as a best practice, do this. So I did it. Okay. And then finally, I made two more connections using a sys view called geo replication links. And because it provided some metadata, it told me who the partner was and where it was located and what was the status of it and things like that. So I added that so these would, I could set the primary and the secondary and also it'll drive what my, my image is here, okay? Just to make a nice pretty Power BI report. That's all I wanted to do, right? Do something nice. Okay, so once I do that and my report created, and you can see right now my primary is you know two and my secondary is just PM, right? PM2 is my primary, PM is my secondary. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to back to my portal and make sure it's same thing, right? You can see primary, secondary. I'm gonna initiate a failover. So we'll get this failover initiated. It takes a little bit for the failover to happen, um, but just be patient. Do, 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 do. So failover complete, bam, through the magic of YouTube. It happens just like that. And so you can see now, remember PM2 was the primary and PM was the secondary, but now you can see, you know, PM is my primary and PM2 is my secondary. What happens if I go back over to Power BI? Now I'm in the bottom one, in the top one, I'm using my primary endpoint, right? The endpoint for the primary server. And then the bottom one, I'm using the endpoint for the secondary server. I don't want people to go change stuff, connection strings and things like that. It should just all happen magically behind the scenes. I'm gonna go ahead and click refresh. I'm gonna cross my fingers, cross my toes, cross my eyes. I don't know how to cross my eyes. And bam, it switches, right? So now PM is my primary, PM2 is my secondary. You can even see my little image switched out, you know, to PM and PM2. And it just works. Awesome, right? So if you want to do this, right? If you want to use Azure SQL database, pretty easy, couple of clicks, you saw creating a database in the server, it's just as easy setting up ava the availability group, sorry, the failover group, not the availability group. It's just a couple of clicks also, you get it up, going, running, you just need to make sure you put your, that SQL server, your other SQL server in a different regions. That's the big requirement. They need to be in separate regions and it all just works. All right, what do you guys think? So you got questions, comments, criticisms, I'll take it all, right? Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, come on, be sure to subscribe. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Fellow is still happening, the fellow is still happening, the fellow is still happening.